Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons, and today we are going to talk about genetic advantage of the people who are biracial or mixed ethnic ancestry. I know that many of you don't like to analyze graphs, but believe me, there is a mystery in this graph, and it is very, very interesting. Before I will analyze this graph, I want to show you that the source of this information is reliable. It is Centers for Disease Control, National Center for Education Statistics. And it was published in the magazine The Economist. So here is shown life expectancy, this line for people of the African ancestry. And as you see, it is about six years less than for white people who are European ancestry. And this life expectancy difference, six years difference, is very well expected. Not because white people are genetically superior to black people, but because of the social and economics factors. If white people in America would earn the same as black people, their life expectancy would go down. If black people would earn and would have the same um, living conditions, as white people have the same education, then their life expectancy would go up. And this explains why life expectancy were growing through the whole 20th century, because of these two factors. And of course, development of the medicine and other uh, socioeconomic factors. But what stands out here, this Hispanic population, Hispanic doesn't mean that these people immigrated from Spain. And uh, basically, Hispanic means here that this is Latina people who are of the mixed genetic background. They are descendants of the Spaniards and indigenous American population. For example, overwhelming majority of the Mexican population is of the mixed ancestry, with most people identifying as mestiza, mixed indigenous and Spanish ancestry. Now I want you to pay attention to this graph. And as you see, there is a correlation between, for example, educational level and also longevity. White people, for example, if we compare with black people, as you see on average, more of them has high education that allows them to take better positions, which are better paid. And this also affects their lifestyle and their longevity. But again, if we compare with Hispanic people, we see that they, their educational level even below the level of the black people. Again, how this uh, can be explained, this graph here on the left. According to this logic, on this graph, they have to be somewhere here. Now think about it, if Latina people would earn as much as white people, would have the same education as white people, their lifestyle would change and they would have the same status. In this case, we would expect their life expectancy to be even over 90 years. If everything would be equal with white people, this is going to be a position where we are going to find Latina people according to this graph and life expectancy. So this was introduction. On the next slide, I'm going to explain this mystery as a geneticist. You probably didn't expect to see this slide, but on this slide, we are going to talk about who are more genetically diverse, humans or dogs. What do you think? Take a look how humans are phenotypically different. Compare, for example, this to people or this to people. Dogs are also genetically diverse, as you see. They're also very different if you would compare them. But some breeds look very similar. Compare these three. But if you'll start to take a closer look, we are going to see even phenotypic huge differences. For example, compare faces of these people. They are on the average the same size. And what is the difference between these faces? Basically, most of it uh, attributed to different skin color. And what else? A little bit different noses, but 
not that big deal. They look pretty much the same, maybe a little bit wider, a little bit smaller, a little bit more flat. But believe me, this is very small variation compared with, uh, for example, dogs. For example, nose of this dog and nose of this dog. Color pattern of this dog and this dog. Or for example, this dog and this dog. Size variation is also huge. Some dogs can be very tiny and some can weigh even bigger than uh, humans. Basically what we did to dogs through the selective breeding, we basically started the speciation because very small dogs cannot interbreed with very large dogs. This is one of the definition of the speciation when two subgroups cannot interbreed easily, even within the same species. So how human population is genetically diverse. If we compare with dogs uh, population, we actually should compare human population with single breed of the dogs. This is how genetically diverse we are. And many of you probably heard or know that many dog breeds are very inbred and as a result have many health issues. And on the next slide, we are going to talk about gene pools which specify genetic diversity. Genetic distance between populations, for example, population A, B and C, we measure as f of st, which can be between 0 and 1, where 0 represents very close populations and 1 represent different species. So within the same species, we never can get one, can get very close to one, but never can get one. It's going to be two different species. Human populations can be compared as population A and B. As you see, we have a gene pool of the same alleles, but maybe with different frequencies between populations. But if we compare dog breeds, this is going to be this two population. For example, this is going to be one breed of the dogs and this is going to be another breed of the dogs. So we have the same alleles, but in completely different frequencies. Of course, this also uh, depends on the breed. Some breeds can be very close and the picture would look like these two populations. But if two breeds would be are very different, especially phenotypically different, that means they are also going to be uh, genotypically different. The allelic frequencies in those populations, in those breeds are going to be different. We are not going to find probably new alleles which are not present in one population but present in another population. We are talking about the same alleles but in different frequencies. And allele is just a version of the same gene. So one gene can be represented with 5, 2 or 22 different versions. So what is going to be this value for dogs? Genetic uh, distance and this is going to be 0 0.28. Memorize this number because on the next slide I am going to show you genetic distance between different human populations and ethnicities. So in dogs it is 0. 0.28. I don't know if you see this numbers clear or not. I can increase this picture so you would be able definitely to see these numbers. And here we have uh, different ethnicities and we also cross match them with other ethnicities. And let's compare, for example, Italian and Iranian. And as you see on this uh, cross, the distance is going to be 0 0.01 and in dogs it is 0 0.28. Let's move down. For example, let's compare North Turkic and let's say Danish. So Turkic and Danish have distance of 0 0.06. Very close compared with dogs 0 
28. Here interesting, Mongol Tungus and Italian. These two populations have like nothing in uh, common. So let's compare Tungus and Italian. And the genetic distance is 0 0.09 or Tibetan and Italian. And it is 0 0.07. So how we can explain this picture, what's wrong with humans? And actually, as you see, some of the populations, especially uh, if we compare some populations in Africa with some populations in Oceania, we will find that our genetic distance are going to be even greater than in dogs. For example, Mbuti and New Guinea. As you see, the distance is 0 0.46. Why? Because these two populations separated maybe over 100,000 years ago. And these two populations didn't mix and they accumulated a lot of um, different mutations in their genome. And also that means that this lead to new alleles. So this range of colors is specified where we better than dogs. It's funny, but from genetic point of view, our diversity is better than in dogs. And this, and as you see, majority of this table, we are going to be less diverse than dogs. Why it is so? Because we humans easily can communicate with each other and we can in bread with each other or breed with each other. And this would lead to loss of heterozygosity. Also, uh, humankind went through the multiple bottlenecks when the size of our population shrink to just maybe a few thousand of people. But as for the dogs, as I said, due to selective breeding, we preserve their genetic diversity. What even worse for us humans on this map, you can see a consanguinity index by country that those being so genetically similar to each other, we also participate in inbreeding. And as you see, according to this color map, the most inbred countries are Pakistan, Afghanistan, India, and Northern Africa, along with China. And probably many of you would wonder, there are so many people live in India and Pakistan, why they are so inbred. Many of you are thinking that inbred populations should live on some isolated small islands in the middle of the ocean. But actually, for example, if we take into account India, though they have a lot of people, but the whole nation is divided to different castes. And these castes do not practice inter-caste marriages, only within their own caste. Those, it is now illegal to practice uh, separation people to different castes, but still it is hugely influenced how people choose their spouse. And when we're talking about consanguinity, we're actually talking when people marry their close relatives. For example, that means... Uh, marrying your cousin. For example, I was born and raised in the USSR and I never in my life heard that anyone would be married to his first cousin. But as you see, this is a normal practice in many countries. And this is what we call inbreeding. Inbreeding cause loss of heterozygosity, just like in dog breeds. Now back to dogs again. Next couple slides, I want to show you life expectancy by the breed. I am not going to read all these life expectancies. If you're interested, you can stop video here, find your dog, your dog breed, and you also can find how long this expect to live. Here's another slide. There are about 400 breeds of the dogs I don't have all of them, just four major, most famous breeds. 
I hope you will find your dog breed here. Let's check, for example, 10, 13 years here, 8, 10, 12, 14, 10, 12, 10, 12, 12, 14, 10, 12, 12, 14, 8, 10, 8, 10, 12, 15, 12, 15, 12, 15, 10, 16, 12, 15. So as you see, this is like average life expectancy in dogs. It also can vary from breed to breed. Sometimes even can be, the difference can be like double between average eight and 16 years. And next couple slides would be the most interesting part of my lecture today. So here you see Pug, this is Cotton. I hope I pronounce the names of these breeds correctly. And this dog is going to be a result of the breeding of these two breeds. Pugs on average live between 12 and 15 years. So 12 plus 15 divided by two would give us 27 divided by two or 13.5 years. This is going to be average for this breed. As for the cotton, it is between 14 and 16 years life expectancy for this breed. So we add these two numbers, divide by two, and the average is going to be 15 years. Now for the progeny of these two breeds, we expect the life expectancy to be 13.5 plus 15 divided by two, and it's going to be 14.25 years. But what actual life expectancy for this mixed dog? I cannot say this, this is a breed, this is a mix. Actual life expectancy is 18 years. Compare 14.25 and 18. The difference is about almost four years. How do we explain this situation? Imagine that uh, because these two breeds are inbred at some locus or just position on the chromosome, Pug has two same alleles, which is capital A, capital A. And another breed, Cotton, has also the same locus, but two different alleles, which are small a, small a. And to the progeny, Pug only can give dominant allele. It can be this one or another one. They are the same due to inbreeding. And this dog also can give the same gene, but different version, which is small a allele. We specify with small a allele. So genotype of this dog is going to be capital A, small a. And this is what we call heterozygous vigor. This breeds lost heterozygosity and this mix restore heterozygosity, which we also call heterosis or hybrid vigor. At the different locus, say for the gene B, Pug can have small b, small b genotype and cotton may have two capital alleles. Again, genotype of the progeny is going to be for this locus, capital B, small b. Let's also go over another case, skip Zhu. This is a mix, this is not a breed, this is a mix between two pure breed dogs. One is Shiperke, I'm not sure if I pronounce this correctly. Another one is Shin Zhu. Life expectancy for Shiperke pure breed between 13 and 15 years. Again, if we add these two numbers, divide by two, the um, average is going to be 14 years. As for the Shih Tzu, it is between 10 and 16 years. So we add these two numbers, divide by two. So 26 divided by two, it's going to be 13 years. So what do we expect for the mix? 14 of one parent plus 13 of the other parent divided by two, 27 divided by two is going to be 13.5 years. 
but actual life expectancy for this mix is 17 years. As you see, the difference is 3.5 years, which is a lot. It is roughly about 30%. If we compare with humans, which live, let's say, 70 years, 30% is going to be about 22 years. Now we can return to our first slide again. And I hope this graph is not a mystery for you anymore. In my first part of this series, I used uh, expression as this biracial people are genetically superior. And I got a comment that don't call them genetically superior, just say that they have genetic advantage. Okay, okay, so these people who are mixed have a genetic advantage over other races, pure races or pure ethnicities, which are in genetic disadvantage. In this slide, I want to recall ideas of the Adolf Hitler about racial purity. Now, as you see, it is very stupid ideas. All these pure breeds lead to inbreeding depression. And intercrossing between pure breeds leads to increase in the heterozygosity, heterosis, and hybrid vigor. And before I will finish today's presentation, I think that some of you may have a question why I'm comparing humans and dogs, why I'm not using just human statistics, because human statistics are affected by social economic status. For example, the same ethnicity living in different countries may have different life expectancy. So our statistics is actually messed up by our education, social economic status, our earnings, and many, many other different statuses. Even, for example, in United States, your longevity depends on which state do you live. And the difference can be three, four, even five years. But dogs in this regard are more ideal models because they don't have this social economic status. So now I'm done and see you in the next video. Goodbye.